This video is about how I modified this Rastar gearbox to fit a brushless motor while using the original pinion gear. Or you can even use a brush motor in here with the original pinion gear. This is just a close-up look at what this gearbox looks like when modified. Once you have the gearbox out of the car, it's just held in place my four screws, I've already taken those out. So let's take a look inside the gearbox. Okay, inside the gearbox, you can tell there's a top half and a bottom half. And there's your differential, the parts going to the wheels, the in-between gear, and then the gear going to the motor. Normally, there's a side piece here. I had to cut that out and a little part that held the back of the original motor in because the new motor, even though it's the same diameter, it's slightly longer and won't fit in the gearbox without cutting out the side of it and then smoothing out the bottom. There's still a little bit of play when you put the motor in there. So I just use one of these little foam pieces or maybe you can use some foamy tape to kind of hold it in there. Just put it in there, put the motor in, put it back together, and just kind of adjust it to see how the gear mesh works. You can reuse the original gear off of the motor and just slide it off the old motor, put it on the new motor, because these are just a snug fit kind of gear. The only problem is, is occasionally these gears might strip if you're driving it roughly or it just happens over time. This is a, one of the reasons I had to take this apart is because when I was filming the video of finding the top speed of my Ford GT, I was losing control when it hit a crack in the street. I had to hit the brakes a few hard times and the next thing I know the gear stripped. But luckily you can find these gears on eBay. I bought a whole bag of 50 of them for like about five, six dollars. These are a little longer than the original gear. This is the original gear. And these are a little bit longer. Kind of figured that might help it hold on to the shaft of the motor a little better. You can get these in metal or brass gears as well. But I thought, well, I don't really want to tear up the other gears in here so if I do have a gear that fails due to driving or hitting the brakes hard I'd rather have that pinion gear maybe strip out versus uh, ruining the teeth on any of these other gears even though this gearbox is well built for a toy grade RC it's still not quite as robust as what you find on a hobby grade RC. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you modify these toy grade RCs is the components just aren't as strong as what you'd find on a hobby grade RC. So generally you wanna drive it more gently or try not to overpower it because sometimes maybe finding gears to replace in the differential or that in between gear might be kind of difficult. Okay, I've got the screws back in the gearbox, so let's put it back in the car. The gearbox just fits in the back of the car like this. Um, there's just a little spot that holds it in. Those two little grooves on either side holds those parts on there. And this is another reason why uh, Sometimes people might wonder, can't you just put a bigger motor in here? So there's really not a lot of room um, on this side or this side really to accommodate a larger, larger motor. And as well as there's not a lot of room over here because this there'd be a piece that goes here to, to hold the gearbox in place. So really a 370 size brush motor or these 2430 size brushless motor usually fit this best and still give pretty good speed. 
All right, the rear suspension just consists of these small springs here, and these pieces just hold it, you put here, and that holds the gearbox down. Sometimes I find that these springs are really tight. So what I've done sometimes is just cut that spring in half, and that gives a little softer ride for the rear gearbox. Sometimes you just have to experiment, but that's what I find works when modifying this. Okay, that's one side put together. Again, the spring just goes in there, and then that black piece just goes on top to hold it all together. All right, now the gearbox is secure. Time to put the wheels back on. As you can see, the rear axle is kind of a hex shape, and that matches up with the, the rear tire. Now there are two pieces to this. There's a little decorative brake piece, and then the rim. You can leave this out if you want to, but if you like to keep it more realistic looking, you can put that in there. There's a little groove on the end, and that just matches up to the groove there on the gearbox to get them in the right way. So that piece just slides in there. And then the rear tire just fits in there. And it's just held in place by a Phillips head screw. All right, screw just drops down in there. down in there. I just tighten it up as not super tight but just where there's no play. Now here's the tricky part. These usually have a little center cap in here. So getting this little center cap out can be sometimes a challenge depending on the design of the rear wheel. But I'll show you how I get that out of here in a moment. I've got that center piece put back in there but I'll show you my method of getting that little piece out of there. To remove that center piece, sometimes it's helpful to just use an X-Acto knife edge or I've got one of these body reamer tools, so it's got a nice little pointy edge. And that's a good way to kind of poke in there to try to remove it without damaging it too much. Let's see if I can demonstrate this. Okay, let me see if I can kind of demonstrate that one-handed. Okay, here we go. Just kind of get in there and then it just kind of pries up like that. All right, now that it's all back together, let's give it a quick test. See if it's working okay. All right, looks like it's working. Since I have the car taken apart, let's just take a quick look at the whole modification here. There I've got the brushless ESC hooked up to the motor, uh, my receiver, there's the servo wire. To the body of the car, I've got the lights taped in there. Here's a look at what I do to the chassis for the battery tray area so I can access everything from underneath the car when it's all put back together. I just, normally there's a, it's solid through here. I just cut all that out. Sometimes these little battery areas here will come out with these screws. Then I just cut it down real good, put it back in because you need this piece here in order to hold the, uh, battery tray lid in when the car is put back together. Sometimes I leave the on off switch, which is right here, because that helps secure that battery tray door when it's closed, but I needed the extra room, so I went ahead and removed that as well. Now we'll take a quick look at the steering setup. The front wheels are held in place by this big piece here. And there's usually some screws 
holding it together. So I'll take that apart and let's take a closer look. Okay, I've got those screws loosened, so we should just be able to slide that off the top there. And this is underneath. Now in this box here, this is where the original steering motor was. So what I do is I take out the motor, hollow out that box, and then fit a small servo in there. So let's take a look at that. Okay, I've got those screws loosened, so let's take a look inside. And there's my servo I've got in there. Now let's just take a closer look underneath it. Okay, with the servo out, I usually use these foam pieces again to kind of help keep it snug in there. Um, this little box that's in here, I hollow that out. Like I said, normally there's uh, pieces holding that steering motor and some gears in there. So I just use a little rotary tool, cut things out of there, smooth it out to give it a good place to put the new servo. On the servo, I just... Uh, Position the servo arm down into through the bottom of this box. I'll kind of show that. Move these pieces here. There's normally a little hole in here because there's a little piece that goes into this part, moves the steering. Sometimes I'll have to carve that hole a little bigger in order for the servo arm to fit in there snugly. Um, I think I'd got that hole a little too big, so I did have to put a little piece of tape to make it more secure. All right, I've got the servo back in the little servo box. And I put a couple pieces of foam over here and one underneath it. Sometimes you just have to adjust that servo where it sits on that steering part properly. So sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error to figure out exactly the best place to put the servo and that just helps clean up the play in there. All right, we've got that together. Just give it a quick little test. Looks like it's moving pretty good again. All right, this top piece is back on. Now it's time to put the, the car back together. All right, we've got it all put back together. Things working. That's working. Let's take it for a little test spin. <laughs> 